In the present discourse, my intention is to delve into the intriguing realm of the impending AMC squeeze. Hey, welcome to AMC Daily. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications by hitting the bell so you never miss any of our uploads and also enter our giveaway. But everyone remember, this is not a financial advice video. As we navigate this complex landscape, it becomes increasingly evident that the dynamics surrounding the AMC short squeeze are undergoing a profound transformation. The once prevailing strategy of attempting to sway shareholders to part with their AMC holdings has evolved into a more aggressive approach one characterized by intimidation and threats aimed at coercing individuals to relinquish their stakes. This paradigm shift is indicative of a scenario in which the AMC short squeeze is on the cusp of realization, and time is swiftly running out for the short sellers who have been involved in this high-stakes gamble. An illustrative example of this metamorphosis comes in the form of a tweet from a certain individual named Salvatore. This tweet conveys a sense of amusement regarding the plethora of threats that are frequently hurled across the digital sphere, and yet these threats appear to fizzle into oblivion without translating into tangible actions. In fact, the individual confesses that he ceased tallying these threats after encountering the third or fourth instance, underlining the pattern of empty bluster. Further intensifying the narrative, a retweet by Biggums, a significant figure in this discourse, carries an air of imminent change. Biggums proclaims that Salvatore's hubris has inadvertently set the stage for a sequence of events, culminating in arrests and intensive interrogations. This retweet signifies a departure from the traditional script of persuading AMC shareholders to divest their holdings before a projected nosedive. Gone are the days of the orchestrated campaigns urging investors to shed their AMC shares in anticipation of a substantial plunge. Similarly, the era of advocates espousing the notion that selling AMC in favor of acquiring AP shares has dissipated into obscurity. The narrative that Schills once promoted, which advocated for the prompt liquidation of AMC holdings at any conceivable price point prior to the impending squeeze, has unequivocally fizzled out. Instead, a novel strategy has taken root, a strategy that entails intimidation and threats as a means to manipulate individuals into capitulating and unloading their shares. These threats are designed to evoke the fear of impending legal action, arrest, and potentially graver consequences. Yet, upon closer scrutiny, it becomes evident that these threats may not hold the substantial weight they aim to project. A comprehensive examination of the past two years unveils an intriguing trend, a pattern of myriad threats that have been hurled into the digital abyss. Threats of litigation, threats of incarceration, and a myriad of other ominous prognostications have materialized with remarkable regularity. Curiously, despite their ominous nature, these threats have consistently failed to come to fruition. A classic example of this trend surfaces through a tweet originating from an individual purporting that a prominent persona within the AMC community doubles as an investment banker at Citibank. The tweet endeavors to lend credence to this assertion by referencing a LinkedIn profile under the moniker AMC Biggums, a far cry from the individual's actual identity. This concocted profile, an artful fabrication, seeks to mislead and intimidate AMC shareholders into relinquishing their stake. It must be emphasized, however, that an astute observer will promptly discern the flimsy nature of this claim. The individual in question, referred to as Biggums, unequivocally dispels this fabrication by pointing out the patent falsehoods within the claim. A thought-provoking dimension emerges when Investor Turf, a prominent voice within this arena, takes the stage. Investor Turf adeptly articulates the futility of legal threats issued by certain entities. They aptly challenge these entities to take concrete legal action founded upon substantive evidence a principle intrinsic to legal proceedings. However, investor turf sagaciously surmises that these entities will refrain from pursuing legal avenues due to their prescient awareness of the consequences that such actions might entail. 
This resonates with the recurring theme, the propensity to eschew legal proceedings that might unveil a disconcerting reality. Investor Turf further underscores the meticulous approach they adopt, underpinning their claims with ample examples and evidence. This is in stark contrast to the reflexive denial embraced by figures like Doug Sifu and Ken Griffin. A compelling facet emerges the paradoxical phenomenon wherein the very individuals who could elucidate the veracity of claims vehemently deny their existence. This stance is posited as a response to the lack of comprehensive awareness among politicians, who remain surprisingly uninformed about the intricacies of entities such as Ken Griffin's and Doug Sifu's operations. The implication is clear if the political landscape were to be illuminated with even a fraction of insight into the operations of these entities, their continued existence might be untenable. A tantalizing revelation surfaces as investor turf tantalizingly alludes to the existence of whistleblowers harboring a treasure trove of information about these entities' activities. The assemblage of files that these whistleblowers possess holds the potential to catalyze a seismic shift. Although the specifics of these files remain shrouded in mystery, the assurance that your day will come looms large. This assurance underscores a resolve to uncover hidden truths, propelling the narrative towards a climactic resolution. This unfolding narrative dovetails with the recent actions of Dan Loeb, a hedge fund billionaire who serves as a barometer for the changing winds within the investment sphere. Lode's introspection reflects a realization that the dynamics governing the market are shifting significantly. The ascendancy of mean stocks and the pivotal role of retail investors in shaping market sentiment have ushered in a new era. Loeb acknowledges the waning influence of fundamental analysis, a cornerstone of traditional investment strategies. Instead, the focus has shifted towards monitoring daily option experience and the rapid-fire discussions transpiring on platforms like Reddit's Wall Street Bets. Lode's recalibration is manifest in his measured approach, reducing exposure to single main short positions in favor of market hedges and short baskets. This recalibration signifies an acknowledgement of the increasingly treacherous terrain of short selling, a domain fraught with risk and uncertainty. In summation, the script underscores the evolving narrative surrounding the AMC short squeeze, a saga poised to culminate in an epochal event. The transition from persuasion to intimidation in the tactics employed by short sellers serves as a testament to their dwindling options. Amidst these developments, the unwavering resilience of the AMC community shines brightly, serving as a beacon against the tide of threats. The emergence of whistleblowers and regulatory actions as potential catalysts for unveiling concealed truths adds a layer of intrigue to the unfolding drama. In concert with these factors, the prospect of imminent change looms large, signaling a reckoning for those who have sought to manipulate the market. As the countdown continues, the clock ticks ever closer to a moment of reckoning that promises to reshape the landscape of investing. Guys, that's all we have for you today. What is your opinion about AMC stock? Get involved and let us know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching.